Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Ninjaga video here on the channel. My name is Tanner Fishies. In today's video, we are going to be counting down my top 10 favorite Ninjago characters, or in simpler terms, the top 10 best Ninjago characters, according to my own opinion. Throughout the many years that Ninjago has been around, we have seen countless characters come and go, and this is just a list of my top 10 favorite characters that I've seen throughout the Ninjago series. Being a fan since day one, I've certainly seen a lot of characters in my day, and these are just 10 of my favorites. So I hope you enjoyed today's video, and let's Let's go ahead and dive on into it. All right, so starting things off in the number 10 spot, we have Maya, of course, being Kai and Nia's mother and one of the best Ninjago characters of all time. I feel like her initial couple of appearances, those being in Tournament and in Hands of Time, I think those were a good start, but Seabound made Maya's character. She's a caring mother. She cares about Nia. She cares about where she's going. And I think for the most part, she is probably one of Ninjago's better parents, all things considered. Her design is also fantastic. I can't really lie there. She is rather, um, uh, can I call a Lego cute? I'm gonna call a Lego cute. She's really cute, and I feel like her character and her design work in tandem to make a character that just stands out as something special. People always ask me all the time what I think of Nia, and Nia's cool, but have you seen her mom, though? Maya is easily one of Ninjago's better characters. I'm not joking when I say that Maya is leagues better than Nia. Nia's not gonna be on this list, but Maya here, she's amazing. Top 10 material for sure. In the number nine spot, we have Harumi. Harumi actually scored big points with me in Ninjago, crystallized. Before that, I wasn't really a huge fan of Harumi. I thought her character was interesting, but she was never really a favorite of mine. With crystallized, though, I found myself more attached to her character than ever before. I'm not sure what it was specifically, but I just found Harumi and crystallized to be an excellent villain, and even in the Oni trilogy, she wasn't too bad. I thought her origin story was heartbreaking. As a villain, she's really strong and motivated, and I love her connection with Lloyd. I think she's a really strong villain, and especially with crystallized, she became one of my favorite villains of all time. I absolutely love Harumi. Hope to see her again very soon. Speaking of villains that I adore, next up in the number 8 spot we have Master Chen. Master Chen might seem like an interesting choice to some people, but Chen was one of my favorite villains ever since Ninjago Season 4 came out. For those that don't know, Season 4 is my favorite season of all time, and Master Chen is a huge reason as to why that season is so great for me. I think Chen is a maniacal villain with an excellent goal, and I thought he was portrayed really well in Season 4. In subsequent appearances, he wasn't as great as he was in his initial debut, but I still find Master Chen to be just downright scary, threatening, and unpredictable. Next up in the number seven spot, we have the green ninja himself, Lloyd Garmadon. Lloyd is another example of a character that I enjoyed a lot back in the day, and even nowadays, I still enjoy him quite a bit, but back when he was first revealed to be the green ninja, he quickly became my favorite ninja. I just loved his storyline, his battle with the overlord was epic, and he quickly took over as the leader of the ninja team. I thought he did an excellent job, and in the Oni trilogy, even though he wasn't my favorite ninja anymore, I thought he excelled quite a bit as a character. Not only with a new voice and new writing, but also a new sense of maturity. Lloyd grew as a character, and the Oni trilogy showed that quite a bit. It's hard not to like Lloyd, he's the main character after all, and I feel like for the most part Ninjago has done a great job crafting his story. In the number 6 spot we have the Overlord. The Overlord is another one of my favorite villains, he's constantly showing up in the background of several seasons, and most recently with Crystallized, I think a lot of people are starting to appreciate the Overlord a lot more. I've been a huge Overlord fan ever since he initially debuted in Ninjago Season 2, and I loved his appearance in Season 3 as well. He's threatening, intimidating, motivated, cunning, and even though his character is simply the bad guy, and not really anything else aside from that, I still find him to be one of Ninjago's biggest threats, and one of the most unpredictable adversaries the ninja have ever faced. Like I said with Crystallized, his character was only increased for myself, and presumably many other Ninjago fans out there, and I hope we see the Overlord again very soon, I'm sure we will, so fingers crossed that day comes sooner rather than later. In the number 5 spot we have Master Wu. It's hard not to like Master Wu, I think Wu is one of the more likable Ninjago characters of all time, because because there's just so much to his character. He's a father figure to the ninja, he's an excellent teacher, he has a lot going on with him and his brother, and of course he's a staple of Ninjago's history. Master Wu is also an excellent fighter, and he's just always there for his ninja. He's wise, he's strong, he's powerful, he knows what to do in a crisis, and even though he keeps some secrets sometimes, I still find myself enjoying Master Wu, and I'm glad that most recent Ninjago seasons, especially Crystallized, have given him a lot more to do. Sometimes he kind of hangs out in the background, but I think Wu is at his strongest whenever he's front and center. In the number four spot, we have Zane the Ice Ninja. I love me some Zane. Zane is a very tragic character by nature, responsible for a lot of
lot of heartfelt and heartbreaking scenes throughout the entirety of Ninjago. With that being said, he's also an emotionally deep character, sporting more humanity than most of his fellow ninja, which is ironic because Zayn is a ninjroid, which is another can of worms that makes his character fantastic to me. He's unique, he's special, he's an awesome team member, and he provides a lot for the ninja team itself. Zayn has had many interesting stories dedicated to himself throughout the entirety of Ninjago's run, and going into every Ninjago story, I'm excited to see what he does next. Zayn is a favorite of mine, and he takes the number four spot on this countdown. Heading on into the number three, we have Skylar in the third place spot here. Skylar might seem like an interesting choice to some, but Skylar is a character who I really admire, and she's a character that I really like as well. Like I said, my favorite season is season four, and Skylar made her debut in that season, and boy was it a strong one. Being paired up with Kai for a larger majority of that season, they play off of each other really well. Skylar is also very calm, deceptive, and cunning in her nature, much like her father, but she's a lot less maniacal. She eventually does make the jump from villain to hero, which I find to be fascinating, and throughout many of Ninjago's adventures, she's been there by the ninja's side, despite not ever being an official member of the team, which honestly I don't really care for, and I find that to be pretty ridiculous. She should have been a ninja from the get-go, not sure why they just never decide to make her one. Anyway, Skylar's powers as well make her a compelling character, having the power of Amber and having the ability to copy other people's powers. That storyline in and of itself is a fantastic one to see play out on screen. There are so many ways that they've expressed Skylar's powers and her personality, and she's easily one of my favorite Ninjago female characters of all time. For the number two spot in the runner-up position, we have Cole the Earth Ninja. Some people might be surprised that Cole is not my number one. However, Cole is my favorite ninja. He's a very caring soul. I find him to be very relatable and down-to-earth, pun totally intended, and for the most part, Cole himself is kind of like a leader figure for the ninja team. He's the heart and soul of the entire squad there, and he's the rock, again, pun totally intended, that holds the team in place. I also love his powers. The Earth Punch is spectacular. He has a tragic history, but he doesn't let it get to him. He is the heart and soul of the team, like I said. He is the most caring member of the ninja team. He cared for Master Wu back when he was a baby, as weird as that might sound. I also love Cole's humor, and I find him to be, again, extremely relatable. Whenever somebody asks me what character I relate to the most from Ninjago, I gotta go with Cole. He just seems the most like a normal person stuck in this crazy fantasy world. He's had a lot of great stories dedicated to him over the years, even though it took some time for him to actually get some focus, and I feel like now Cole is a very popular character with a lot of Ninjago fans absolutely adoring the Earth Ninja. I love Cole's character, and I'm glad to be putting him in the number two spot on this countdown. However, there is still one character that has them all beat, and that character is our number one entry on this list, that of course being Garmadon. It's hard to say that Garmadon is not Ninjago's best character. He totally is, in my opinion. He's strong, powerful, hilarious. No matter what form he's taking, whether it's the original Garmadon, Sensei Garmadon, or his weird revived form that quickly grew a personality, he is always a joy to watch on screen. Garmadon is one of my favorite villains across every piece of media. He is just the perfect bad guy, in my opinion, being Ninjago's first bad guy and being one of Ninjago's constant antagonists. He is a great villain, a great character, and even a great good guy when he wants to be a good guy. Not only that, Garmadon is extremely funny, like I said, especially when it comes to his relationship with Lloyd and the rest of the ninja. I'm really glad that Garmadon was the one that got the spin-off comic, because honestly, if any character deserved some type of extended storyline dedicated to themselves outside of the main ninja cast, it was Garmadon. I find Garmadon's story to be intriguing, and it's always a blast to watch Garmadon on screen whenever he is on screen. And with that being said, Garmadon takes the number one spot on my list of top 10 best Ninjago characters of all time. It's hard to beat Garmadon, I'm gonna be honest. But of course, with that being said, that'll pretty much wrap it up for my thoughts here. Those were just my opinions. Feel free to leave your own down below in the comments. If you want to drop your favorite Ninjago character down below, feel free to let me know. Or if you want to drop your own top 10 list, feel free to do that as well. All comments are welcome down below. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I will talk to you guys again really soon. Peace.